shit, ladies and gentlemen. How are you doing out there? This is Intergalactic Interviews, episode 107. Or is it 107? We'll only know when we get to 110, because that's how you say that. Ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing out there? Did you have a fantastic week? We had a great week. We had a good time sharing our crew episode with you. And you know what is even better than a crew episode is letting you know about an amazing opportunity. You know what opportunity we're talking about. If you've been listening for a while, you're probably already on board. But if this is the first time, let us tell you about Float House. Oh my goodness. Go to floathouse.ca right now and you're going to see the premier, premier isolation tank premier experience. Premier as in first. Premier not, not as in, premier as in leader. That's right. Premier as in first. Isolation tank experience in the lower mainland. Hi, people out there. How you doing? Okay, there's a lot of people out there waving. Sweet. Uh, so it was Maybe a couple. It was a couple ladies out there. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you're probably wondering what is what is a float. Well, it's basically the best way to rejuvenate your mind and relax your soul. What's that? Oh, well, you jump into a tank and you just let the mysteries of the universe unlock. How amazing Watch is that? Now me. it's very hard for me to really describe that because it's such a personal experience but i can tell you from my experience it's one of the most fulfilling things you can do with your time and i'll tell you what a 90 minute float can really help you unwind from your day to day you know what i love the most about it jesse laborde guest of this week unwinding unwinding <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I love the fact that it's a very clean facility it is very clean it's very clean it has it has uh very knowledgeable people here um it's like a spa for your mind it's so 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 relaxing. It's very, very super, super cool. I really yeah, love it. It's really nice in here. Yeah. Um, there is no ice cream floats, but that's maybe something. <laughs> yeah. We wrote down a list of things that, you know, just are not included. And we're like, oh, you know, double floats? Where's the double floats? Obviously floats. That's right. <laughs> not included. Actually, nowadays, uh, recently, as of last week, Seamart behind the boards today. By the way, everyone welcome Seamart to the show. Ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing? Uh, he told I'm us last week <laughs> that on Fridays, you can float for two and a half hours for the price of, of 90, 90 minutes. Minutes. I saw a, that in the bathroom. You did. Yeah. It's true. A, He's it's not a, even lying. It's, it's a, a great. Uh, that's an amazing. Seems like a great value. Oh my like god! It's a value. crazy, incredible value. So good. Uh, and you know what? If you want to try all this amazing, amazing, well credited and testimonial worthy experience out for yourself, all you have to do is go to floathouse.ca and. Uh, Give them a call. Maybe, uh, maybe even just even book stop online. in. You can see it right from the street. That's right, right here downtown in Vancouver, British Columbia, folks. It's amazing. And you know what? I think they got five locations. I think it's five. Might have six. They're growing all the time. They actually just expanded into Alberta. So uh, I'm. You'd pretty... say their success is floating away. Oh, don't say that. Don't, uh, don't that, don't sounds, say that. that sounds that sounds negative. Awful. Actually, that's terrible. Like it's Jesse, going away. Terrible. Jesse Laborde, comedy writer. That's terrible. <laughs> Uh, actually, if you go to Float House right now, use our podcast promo code I I podcast. That's lowercase I lowercase I podcast. It's not really case sensitive, but people think we're talking nautical when we say I I podcast. I, I. Oh wow, I did not go there. That's right. Well, no one does. That's okay. <laughs> well, some do. <laughs> some do. Some I, might. I. You're right. We should just. Seymour had a good idea. We should just have that as a code as well. Just yeah, in it case. should be both. So if someone does that, just to pick up the slack. Then I mean, yes, why not? Um, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you know what? I gotta just say here. Hold on. Our guest this week is a, a fantastic songwriter. One of my favorites. He was actually the original guest on Intergalactic Long Interviews. Long time fan Way of the show. Way back on episode three. Uh, he's also appeared a few times in the show. He seems to always be around when we're just changing things up. And he's he's kind of our guinea pig. Been here for a while, though. He's uh, the beloved, uh, the jovial Jesse Laborde. How Hello. you doing, sir? Hello. This, oh, man. So good to have you here. Thank you so much. It's so great to finally be here. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's just great. You, Seamart's here. Yeah. I mean, Joel's been here, like, what, four times now? So it's nice to be finally. <laughs> Zenny Zen. It's nice to be Not Zen. Here, <laughs> finally. Joel's only been here once. Actually, Zenny's, Zenny's done the show a couple times, but uh, he's only been here once. He, he did episode okay. well, one. Well, I was a here. joke anyway. Come sure, on. yeah. Come on, yeah. It's not a, I, uh, I actually think we should mention that Michael Saavedra's not here today. Yeah, I was going to say, it seems kind of emptier in here. It's a little emptier in I've here. I've seen the videos, and there's usually less one cynical. more person. Less cynical. Less cynical. More room for my ego on this side. It's great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he, keeps, he keeps you in check. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you know, it gives me, lets me stretch out a bit. It's good. I love it. Uh, speaking it's of stretching out. It's not a good thing, out, but... It's not a good thing at all. Uh, speaking of stretching out, though, just the board, eh? Yes, I stretch... Semi regularly. You uh, you've been stretching uh, a, a few uh, few new skill sets out there. I think it, I'd be remiss to not bring up the fact that in my hand here, 
I have one of the uh, show the camera. Can the camera see so. that? I don't know. Can what we get the this cam- on camera? See, yeah, it's on you already. Uh, this here is you're on this guy. It says Valley View, and how do you say this word? Apiary. Apiary. Apiary is a bee farm essentially. And it says right here Ray Laborde. Ray Laborde. Now who's Ray? Ray's Ray Laborde is my father. Your father. He takes care of the bees generally. I'm I gonna just, try this right now. I just show up. He and cherishes eat the, the honey. bees apparently. He does. He cares about them greatly. They're very okay. special. The bees. I so. can just. You said it's just sanitary. dip right in. It's fully antiseptic. Fully Fully uh, anti, whatever. It's you, honey, by the way. If anyone's never go back. Yeah, it's honey. If anybody's I'm glad to do this at the beginning the of the show, so I'll have his sticky fucking hand the whole show. It's true. You'll get it sticky forever, but. Oh, that's really so good. So it's nice, nice, and it's not overly sweet. There's nope. a bit of flavor to it, but. I know some people that don't like honey for that reason. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, some of the honey out there. Uh, mm. If you boil honey, like if you buy honey at a grocery store and it's pasteurized. Um, you can't boil honey. It doesn't. It changes chemically, and so mm. it's the sweetness remains, but all the kind of good flavor gets boiled away. So How a lot much, of the uh, honey you buy at a store is pretty shitty, honestly. So, uh, so do you guys, is this available online or or like uh, in sure, person, but really just at my house, yeah. Okay. Hand-to-hand. Or if you live in Horsefly, you can buy it in a few places. In Horsefly. Horsefly is where I'm from. Delightful town That's of Horsefly, a real place? British Columbia. Yeah, it's a real really? place. It's about six and a half hours north of here. Wasn't there like? A, uh, like a crazy, like, natural disaster recently around Well, there? yeah, the Mount Pauly mine explosion. That's actually close to, like, have you heard of the Mount Pauly no, mine I explosion? Haven't. A couple years no. ago, there's a big fucking mine there. It's about two years And they ago, dump right? all their crap into this giant tailings pile pond Sorry. that they were swore that was re- reinforced the way it's supposed to be, and it just blew in the middle of the night, and, like, billions of gallons of shit just flushed down into this beautiful S- lake. And Tailings are, like... Like, tailings are like after you process the shit out of everything in a mine to get your gold and your copper or whatever you're just left with this like chemically blasted oh, or whatever yeah. it's like not suited it's for not swimming. necessarily <laughs> toxic but the shit they add to it, some of it is toxic because you're mining like arsenic particles or whatever like whatever you find after you extract the copper and the gold. it's like a, a lot of byproducts it's too. bad though to it's bad it, yeah it ain't good and this is like a freshwater lake it went into it dumped into like one of the nicest lakes in <clears> the, in the province i've certainly am a little inside saying that because my parents have a cabin on it but it is a really what? nice lake. how did uh, that affect their cabin uh we are down or upstream from it so like it flows away so we never got as much we were on the lake the night it happened mm. which was pretty crazy um but it didn't affect it too much but it it just kind of wrecked the whole watershed all around it that's awful yeah it was super bad uh, and they never paid. They never got in any trouble for it. They just did no, why every, would they? everything they Wait, could. They never like, got fined. They got some shit, but in the end, nothing has happened. They've they've never done anything. They should be fined for that. It's like some imperial medals. I can't remember where they're from. Somewhere they don't give a shit. So they don't give a shit. All they want to do is get the mine back up running again. They should be fined for that. They should be. They should. Be There's allowed. no the mine should be shut down for one. And the people are kind of fucked because it's like poisons their drinking water supply, but the mine also employs like seventy percent of the town. Yeah. So the town is now like dead wishing that this mine that killed them would open back up again so they could start working again so it's like this fucking vicious circle of it's like domestic contamination abuse. and like we need our jobs back sort of thing so um yeah what it's kind fuck? of a screwy situation but I, not know, what i want the area to be known it's for tough because it is, like of course no, mines no, no, no. are like a necessary evil on some levels to a degree but they're not rare earth mines they're not mining fucking no, I cell phone batteries that. they're yeah, making yeah. gold for jewelry no, and I copper for jewelry but like, it's still like an industry right it's yeah it's like so it's tough because that's kind of like Canada's valuable as a country because of because all of the resources. resources. Yeah, However, absolutely. the the need or the ability that we have to extract them is, you know, sometimes tragic to the environment around yeah. it. And if we got as a province or a country any of the dividends of a mine, I'd be a lot more for it. But all the profit is going to Imperial Metals sure, or whatever or I don't company, know and nobody fucking but, gets yeah. anything out of it. Some like, than, like faceless. Well, yeah, obviously that community. Entity, like, exists. but if it was like. In certain South American countries or whatever, where mining is more of like a national thing, where it's like feeds the government's pocket mm-hmm. a little more, then you know it is somewhat necessary. Well, a lot of those, I don't know. Well, a lot of those governments uh, in South America you're referring to, like they they eventually had to buy out their previous contracts. Oh yeah, like, like people yo, went in yeah. and abused the shit. When I was in Bolivia, it was like abuse. Like all the mines had been just like depleted and destroyed. And when like, were you in Bolivia? I was in Bolivia in 2007. Where did you go? Whereabouts? I went all through the country, mostly in the Andean Highlands area, a little not so much in the jungle part of it, so like the west side of Bolivia, but pretty much crossed the whole from Titicaca all the way to, um, we went through Argentina eventually, but we whoa, we spent uh, most of our time on the Andean side of Bolivia. That's crazy. So um, how did you like spend your time there? Did you find it 
welcoming? Was it was it? full of fucking once in a lifetime things. It was crazy. We did all kinds of stuff. We went mountain biking on the world's deadliest road. They call it. We did all kinds of fun stuff. I never want to go back really, well, but we did all kinds. Tell me of, about it was, this road. <laughs> tell me it's about fucking crazy. It's like it's pretty at its title. widest. It's like two meters wide at its widest. It's like we you start at like two five thousand meters. meters and you end up at pretty much like 200 meters. Like you drop like five kilometers of elevation on this Ooh. road. If somebody finally built a highway that kind of wrapped around, but forever, this was the highway that you would go if you yeah. met a truck. And it's like bank and then like a 500 foot drop. No guardrail. No guard. God, no, nothing at all. <laughs> like a dirt road that washes out. It's oh like, it, just, it earns the name where it says people die on it all the fucking time. Um, what was the so name? the first thing that obviously gringos do when they set up shop is like, let's do mountain bike tours here. Jesus Christ. So, what was, uh, do you know what the name of that was? Uh, it's out of the side of the pass. It's called the uh, World's Deadliest Road. If World's know. Deadliest Road. I'm going to just look this up real quick. Um, where I about what the highway's called. It's just outside of La Paz, which is the capital of the political capital of, uh, of Bolivia. Bolivia has two capitals, or maybe it's the cultural capital. One of the two. What came up, by the way, came up right away. Yeah. Oh, it's fucking famous for <laughs> the, being the word. The North Young, Youngest? Young? young what Maybe. Is, is sure. that what you said? The North Youngest Road is a road leading from La Paz to yeah. Caro, is Croico? I don't know. Yeah, I can't remember. It's like a wildlife sanctuary, sanctuary at the very bottom of the hill. There sweet. we go. Yeah. Yeah, it was cool. It was an epic day. Like, wow. You dropped 5,000 meters in a crazy. day. Like, I don't know if you've ever been like high elevation, like to Colorado or what somewhere. What was that like on your physiology? The I got altitude sickness huge. I went. What does that feel like? It fucking, you feel weak. You can't do anything. It's like a cold. It's like a really bad cold, but you're just like, you really feel gravity. Like, it just kind of presses down on your body. Because that was when we, Cambridge went on our first tour. So, in a span of five days, I drove from Montreal. <laughs> All the way back to Vancouver, which is a shit which drive. like straight, oh. straight, like straight three eight hours sh- of a, straight fucking driving. It's um, a rough one, especially when you have to go partied through, one uh, night, yeah. hopped on a plane, flew to Peru, to to Cusco, and then climbed Machu Picchu like within the span of a week. So I went from like sea level Vancouver to fucking four thousand meter Peru, and I just like got crushed, like the weight of the world literally crushed. Oh, shit, me. that's a fitness check. Yeah, but I got you get used to it. After a couple days, I was fine, but. Did you feel any type of, I don't know, n- need to stick around, like to, to maybe stay at that? Like some, some people go to like higher ev- elevations and they experience like, oh, I should have been here for a while. Do you, yeah, do you no, it? it was fucked up because you couldn't do anything. Like we, you couldn't go for a walk. Like we went, we went on this, like, <laughs> like you were, I was so tired and out of breath. <laughs> Only in Bolivia, we went to this one spot that was like these hot springs that was like, 5,000 meters, I think, or 4,800 meters. Like, yeah. that's that's a fucking airplane height. Yeah. Like, um, and Jeez. I just went up this hill, like, the equivalent of the top of that building, and, like, just went for a little jog this to little get a building view. building behind us. And like, I, like, three stories. I was wiped out. I had Damn. no breath. It really fucked me up. But makes after, you, yeah, after a couple weeks, I was better, for sure. It makes you really respect the, you know, some of the athletics that involve, like, when people are like, I'm going to go train in Colorado or oh, something. Yeah. Huge difference. I even notice it when I go from horse side to here. Like spend, just spend a week, to, really? spend a week in horse and then come to sea level. I feel my head caving in a little bit. Really? Yeah. Wow. I don't, Hell yeah! I altitude never, sickness. It's a I, real thing. Seymour, have you ever experienced altitude yeah, have sickness? You? Yeah. I've been on a plane. Yeah, you don't get on the plane because <laughs> planes pressurized. But. I understand that. So no. <laughs> yeah. well, I have been yeah. on an airplane. Well, <laughs> turns out no. Okay. Fair enough. I I never actually really experienced that too much because uh, I'd say what's Kenora? Well, pretty Shitty. much fucking flat it's like pretty much sea level I'm yeah sure. it's pretty low I think it's, it's shield you know yeah it's first of all it's canadian shield but then also it's uh the largest collection of like freshwater islands boy it's nice lakes. there huh have you ever been to kenora i've been to thunder bay many many oh, many that's times close. yeah that's close. it's pretty close similarly uh country-wise a little different yeah bear skin but... flies both places <laughs> yeah. bear skin gets a shout out about once a week bear skin <laughs> you should, like you, bear I, skin no or no like no bear my cousin skin. works for bear skin there, airline. there's an airline that serves almost exclusively northwestern ontario and uh you made a joke about oh you're gonna fly a bearskin airlines there, yeah. but I get to Thunder Bay and my cousin's like oh I work at Bearskin Airlines. Like, of course you do. Interesting. You've never heard of them. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty funny. Well, I've I've heard of them many times. Well now, no. When I used to go when I was younger. Oh, so you're you're one of these frequent flyer bearskin guys. I never I've never flown bearskin. I've bear never even fucking heard of this bearskin airline. Just mm. wait, but regional. I've never ever planned to fly to Northern Ontario that's if I can help never. it. <laughs> I for Fly my over it yeah for, all the time all fair the time. enough for my 
entirety of my life, I've always just been accustomed to flying in and out of Winnipeg and driving to my hometown. Well, Kenora's pretty close to Winnipeg. Right? It's only like, it's what, probably, an hour and a half or something? Uh, two hours. You could probably hours, do it. You yeah. could probably, I've done it in like mm. 90 minutes. So Kenora is much farther east or west than I thought it was. Kenora's like right on the line. Right on the right border. Right on the Ontario border. Yeah, it's okay. right it's there. There's nice actually like a For sign. For some reason, I thought it was further east. There's a sign about half an hour from my parents' place that says, this is the latitude, longitude center of Canada. See, so that's like interesting center. because I, there's a fucking place in Winnipeg that claims that as well. I think it's all of there. It's Eastern really, Canada it's, claims that they're center Canada, so they don't have to exactly. admit that they're <laughs> Eastern Canada. Well, that's another thing, too. I come out here and everyone thinks that I'm... I'm from uh, East, Coast. East Coast. They're always like, oh, you, well, you got get it conversely with bands that tour. They were like, we're doing on a fucking West Coast tour to yeah. Alberta. It's like, fuck off. Yeah, no, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, but like, it's a Western <laughs> province. I consider it a West Western Canada. Yeah, but well, not West Coast. You do hear people no, no, drop no. the coast. Yeah, it's so relative. It's so relative. You're right, though. Like the coast, like when you, yeah, like when Spree Killers, uh, they just did. Uh, Spree Killers, everybody. Spree Killers, yep. Yeah. They're good band. Yeah. Uh, they just finished their uh, cross country tour and uh, they went. They did there and back dates all the way there, dates all the way back. You know how it goes. You don't, yep. want, de- you don't want dead space out on the road. Well, you try to avoid it. It's hard and Canada. That's right. But. Yeah, exactly. So so all the way there, all the way back. But then G-Tone, I mean, this is like his fourth or fifth time out on the road this uh, year. So yeah, he's, he's been busy. He's, he's been, been doing busy, it. He's been busy, right? So he, he just did a tour for someone, and they did like a Western Canadian tour, and it ends right before Kenora, basically. Like right, Winnipeg is like the end of the west and they're calling it west yeah Ooh, which is that see, provokes my to ire me, like yeah. yeah i don't know if i'm down with that saskatchewan or it's like saskatchewan's the last if, western province i think most people think if you don't touch ontario that's that's west that's a west yeah people in ontario think yeah, that. i think that goes yeah, back to exactly like, it goes back to dominion like uh upper oh yeah i've Canada. had conversations with people yeah. in like <laughs> on both in ontario and quebec like uh conversations with english people and with quebecois and they're like they do still inherently yeah. think that they are Canada, and like, like all these goddamn I mean, new provinces need to start towing the line. Like, original two boys, were <laughs> yeah, like, Whoa, exactly. What the fuck? It's like cool. They're like, do you remember when Newfoundland didn't want to sign until 1947 or something? Like like, no, I don't remember like that. It's like Hockey Night in Canada used to be like, uh, what was his name? Uh, something Foster. Fuck, he, Foster Hewitt. He used Foster to say, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Hockey Night in Canada. Like that anymore. <laughs> Foster, yeah, that's right. That's a, good, that's a good name. It's a good stage name if you had to go with it right now. But uh, he used to say, like, oh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, singer. welcome to Hockey Night in Canada. I'm uh, serving you coast to coast and Newfoundland. And Newfoundland. <laughs> he, used to, he used to have to say that. Isn't yeah. that strange? That's, that's a powerful little move there. Foster Hewitt would be a great folk singer name, though. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. I'm pretty sure it probably already is. Yeah, exactly. Somebody's called it. <laughs> yeah, like, even if their name isn't that, <clears throat> that's what they're calling themselves. It's like an album name. Foster Hewitt. The I Foster went down Hewitt. and saw a folk singer recently. Do you know Foy Vance? Foy? Foy Vance. No. He's an Irish guy. Loves American country, like... Was he on tour? Yeah, he's, he's, on, he's just starting his tour. He's from Ireland. Where'd you watch it? In Seattle. Foy. In Seattle. Hold on. In Seattle, an Irishman came to start his tour. On Visa? Are we outing him Some right now? Some people do that. They fly. <laughs> fly somewhere to start. Uh, I was going to say Foy. Isn't that a French word for something? Probably. Un- undoubtedly. Fly. They got a different word for everything. <laughs> yeah, it was really good. Uh, you What's would your know. policy in your studio of drinking out of flasks? <laughs> We're all Openly. for it. We're for it. Openly. Him. Yeah. Don't really care. This is a classy place. I don't know if you know that, by all means. Plus, who knows? Who knows? You're not just drinking, uh, you know, spir- kombucha. Kombucha. Spiritu- kombucha sp- spirituality. Kombucha juice. They that, sell it here. That would be some next I have level. I to drink kombucha for sure. Some top tier West Coast Vancouver life shit. Anybody want to get down on the Irish? I'll do that. Uh, that would be some. I had to bring Irish whiskey because I was afraid you'd be drinking Jack Daniels. Fair <laughs> enough. I'm surprised MD didn't bring a little. Uh, Sometimes I spare I spare those around me from such things. Well, okay, today was that's one of those nice days. to know that that's but, uh, that would be the most Cascadia Northwest like a, a North American thing you possibly do is drink kombucha from a flask. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's a Vancouver Vancouver yeah. thing. Yeah, sure. or Portland maybe. Or pocket mm. kombucha. It's pocket, just like yeah, I'm, 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 I'm mulching right now in my Kobu? pocket. Kobu, this, bro, you going on there? Seymour's going to hit some of these uh, flasks. Um, oh yeah. See, speaking of album titles and shit like that, you're going to be doing some recording with the great Jesse Gander. I'm so excited shortly. to record with Jesse Gander. Uh, I've only. I'm a big fan. I've never actually crossed paths with Jesse. 
Um, but I, as, as an engineer, you'd really appreciate his, uh, his technique and stuff I, too. I do. And I, as a producer, because I think he works really well with people. Like, I think the best stories I've heard about times and results and great sounding records yeah. are people that dive into collaboration yeah. with him. Oh, yeah. And don't be so hardline and be a little more flexible with what you want it to sound like. So. I, I'm, such a, I'm such a big fan of some of his body of work, like just his discography. So many, so many pieces. Story? Justin Gander, he's a producer, engineer in town kind of thing. He used to play in a band called DBS. He's famous in the punk rock world because for being in a, back in the early 90s, a fucking killer punk band that kind of was like very influential all the way across Canada. Like okay. he, he just has it. Still well re- recognized DBS. as being royalty, yeah, Canadian punk rock royalty. Like, like he, ha- he has, um, I guess the best way I describe it, like he, he just has what I'm listening in terms of sonic quality and just like, uh, pacing and, and and timing and then you could just tell the fluidity of the record is just very natural it's cohesive it's very very rare and, and and the idea that like someone like this is working with some of my favorite groups is like mm. fucking amazing so yeah and he often does some like really noisy shit like i mean i love punk rock but there's some noisy stuff out there that loses me like when it's just yelling and tone guitar tone does, and stuff like that he does, have he a does a lot of that stuff pieces, but it's like yeah. it's all listenable <laughs> to all of it is always good like he's really great at tones and i was i've done a few sessions in there with him just for other people's records just like being a hired voice essentially yeah. like just singing harmonies and i've had tons of fun because he's a, he's a really good piano player much like yourself well and so, like, melody you. is in his head all the time, so he'll hear a vocal line, and he's just like, try this, da 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 da, da. Like, he's got he's a put, fucking yeah. sick harmony in his head already. And for me, I, like, I'm pretty flexible with that. Like, I can, on the spot, just try a bunch of shit. I'm happy to do that. So I've had a great time working with him on, like, You're just great doing with- harmonies. So now I'm excited to work on my own uh, my own songs. I mean, we've been in a few sessions together, and, and, and I think, uh, if I do say, like, you have a great... Um, you have a great ability to be able to recognize like when to just improv something and kind of throw out the plan, quote unquote, like, which is really, you know, like there's a, there's a main idea to stick to, but then you're like, fuck it. Let's just try that. Like, yeah, I, I like love it. that. I Cause love it always that, ends up yeah. being like my favorite thing on the record too, because you have yeah. an idea in your head for so long and you've heard it a million times <laughs> yeah. and it's like in the studio, it works out like you hope it will, but then somebody just does something a little different and you're like, that's the greatest, that's yep. my favorite thing on the record. And it's like, cause you've never heard it before. So it's almost like if you assign a percentage to it, there's like probably about 80% that you can be like, I'm very committed to these ideas. Yeah. And then about 20% that you're like, I'm just going to let that day dictate yeah. how that's going to go. Like, and that's where the, that's where the beauty in some records really come from where, where you, you, you hear the stories about it and you're like, oh, they recorded this all in one 14 hour session or, or something yeah, yeah, like that. That's and you're like, so wow. Crazy. Yeah. I always captures. never believed those stories. Me too. You know, I always have, <laughs> I always picture an engineer like working yeah. fucking 12 hours after the band leaves <laughs> editing. Yeah. And stuff. I'm like, like what are we doing in the yeah. case, right? Like, yeah, it's, like, it's not including the engineer. We fucking nailed it. Band right. leaves yeah. and then like some dude that's just, like, right. editing some for right. hours. Or poor fuck. Could be anybody. Some, some poor fuck is like, Definitely. He's like, when did we stop uh, the clock? So yeah, it's like yeah, writing like, notes yeah. during the session about That's like right. note at two minutes fourteen seconds. Redo always, this whole fucking thing. I always find like it's almost like a dubious honor though. It's like, oh, you recorded fourteen hours. It's like, so you just didn't even try or plan it or anything. Like, yeah, you know, you just <laughs> yeah, like you yeah. only took one day to put out this work. Like, yeah, yeah exactly. It, I mean, like, so I mean, that's pretty impressive. But at the same time, like. Shouldn't I can't it, imagine going into longer? the studio unprepared, too. Like, so many stories you hear about people oh. who write shit in the studio, and it's like, mm. even if you have the budget, like, I, I would, I have to be, like, like you say, 80. I'm more like 90% yeah. percent of I knowing exactly what I want to do, and that last 10% is going to be a fucking blast for me. Super. Because I'm, like, really, as long as I get prepared, bare yeah. bones. But some people are like, oh, we wrote this one yesterday in the studio. Like, that would just kill me, because oh, I would want to yeah. practice it at home 100 yeah. times first. Yeah, That's that a would, different era, too. That, that yeah. would cut out, the like, literally the heart of my creativity if, if I had yeah. to go in unprepared, because, I don't know, like, you and I come from... You know, almost literally the same school of thought, but like literally we, the we, same like, school. We, uh, <laughs> we we actually like you know we come from this idea where like pre productions everything. You have yeah, to, you have to have it so cohesive and so together because when you go in there, it gives you that freedom. Because yeah, if you want to fuck around and try some ideas, you have the knowledge of like, well, if I really have to kill it right now in one or two takes, I could do it. Like, yeah, like that yeah, kind yeah. of thing, which is what it comes down to. I, I, I've always prided myself on how I, I prepare. Uh, artists I work with, you know, like like clients and stuff like that. Like sometimes when you're dealing with um, these different types of mentalities, you're constantly 
measuring and uh, tempering their expectations for like what to like for the record for the creative process for the post yeah. record you know everything like that you're always you're always trying to like get them in the right the most perfect little small little niche of, of perfect creativity where they're like oh my god I come in everything's perfect I got the Irish whiskey I got I got this the lights are perfect yeah. everything's fine you're creating this environment for it and and if they come in and they're like yeah, I didn't even practice. I don't know anything about this. I don't know. Blah, blah, I would blah. lose it. I'd As a band member, producer, it. or an engineer, I would oh. fucking lose my mind. As a producer or engineer, I'd be like, fine, your money's... I, I mean, the it. clock is yeah. ticking. Like, yeah. It's fine with me. But yeah. <laughs> even as that, I wouldn't want to like put my name Promote in something that, that was like, like so half-assed. Yeah, I go, I go, listen, this is my day rate and you can do, yeah, do whatever, whatever the fuck you, fuck you want, you want yeah. on that like, but like on, on and then like on a like a personal level you're like fuck you yeah. know if you would have just put an hour into this you'd yeah be everybody fine. wants to be part of something that like is awesome yeah. on all on all fronts so. now i don't I, I don't know how much you've had experience with this but sometimes um you know dealing with hippity hop uh i'll get I'll the get, hippity hop i get this i'll tell you my experience is vast vast <laughs> i'll get this call Leo all Bridge. the fucking time jesse laborde let me sit up here while i take this sip yeah, <clears throat> posture is important. Posture. Mm. You're gonna fuck my camera up. All right, fine. That's oh, okay. Wait, I'll no, fix I'm, it. I'm down. I got it. That's okay. So every spring, I'll pass this to you, bro. You want some of this? Uh, uh, good right now. Every spring, the exact same thing happens, like clockwork. I I I start telling people around me around February. I say, I say I'm gonna get really fucking busy here in about a month in March and April because every fucking year it's the exact same thing. It, it's without fail. Uh, I get a call on the first nice summer day, the first real night. I mean like, yeah, it's like, Oh, any, I've been inside for a month. Dude. That's right. Yeah. Like if it's like say plus 12 though, but it's really sunny, like bright sunny here in Vancouver, I get a call and it'll be from a rapper and they'll be like, Yo, we have to we have to get in the studio this weekend and record something to release this song. I got fire. all these ideas, blah blah blah. <laughs> and I'm like, guess what? We should have been doing this in the fall, yeah, and the winter, so you'd have this summer release prepared. I'm like, you don't get a summer release prepared in the fucking. It's never summer. done like, when you in the time that you want it. Never, and, and even if it is, it's like it's rushed or it's or it's most importantly, it's it's probably not the exact execution you really thought it no. was going to be so it's awful so every year i tell everyone like right about now right here in the fall we're going into Perfect october time to record man. i start telling people Working i'm like, ideas I'm like and stuff. guys yeah i'm like you want to do a summer banger as they call them i'm like fuck let's yeah, put her together crap. yeah i'm like i'm all about it i'm like check it we can shoot fucking 10 videos between now and yeah, the summer you'll have 10 videos right i always try to tell people to get their their pre preparation on but then without fail I'd say one out of five, one out of seven will be like, yeah, okay, let's do it. And they have, they just happen to have the budget. They just happen to have this together or whatever. And then the rest of them hit me up in the spring. And then it's like, it's the like a crowded door jam. Fire, yeah, yeah. They're all trying to get through the door. What do you mean? I, well, I can't get in. Well, I can get you in like two and a half, three weeks if you want. And they're like, well, oh, that's not fast enough. And then I let them down. And it's like, no, it's, it's a very difficult thing, but I find more than anything, the, uh, the idea in hip hop of like, cause just to come pull this all back to our main point about timing and being prepared is you mean you don't have any time? I mean, I'm, we're talking like one song. I could probably bang this out in like 20 minutes. Yeah. It's like, why? And I'm like, what? Why would you want I like, to? I like, probably wouldn't even get the levels right in 20 minutes. And nobody <laughs> ever fucking bangs it out in yeah. 20 minutes. One even, take Johnny's are pretty rare. That's right. I like, mean, even if it's good, it's still going to take more than 20 minutes. Like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I always try to tell them, I'm like, did you write it? Yes. And then they say, I'm like, did, did you edit it? Yeah. I'm like, okay, well the best writing in my opinion comes from revision. Yeah. Like, like the, well, best. I don't know how important is demoing in the hip hop world. Cause Very I demo important. the shit of my songs. I'll do like an acoustic version yeah, and then like a live take version. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to do another round of demos before we go in. Like in the next two weeks, we're going to do another yeah. round of demos. Like it's very important. I find myself demoing, portions of the arrangement more so than say working with with uh, other genres in the past where it's like here's a full song like yeah. like you know um like oh, here's a full piece of song it's only uh vocals and acoustic guitar but uh i know what i want to flesh out with this this is the demo sweet okay cool you, you record this at home or something that's fine yeah. but like uh i have uh some uh, not sometimes, more often than not, it'll be like, here's a hook idea. Yeah. I have, I have this idea for this chorus and it goes like this. Da, 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 da. And most of the time I'm just doing like, uh, 
like uh, melody placers where they're not lyrically defined by anything. I'm just saying like da 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 and whatever. And then people just get like, in the oh, flow. Yeah. yeah, and then sometimes that, that ends up called in the hip hop world the flow. The flow. Just the board. That's exactly what they call it. I man. know my terminology. I could tell I you. I listened sa- to at least three hip hop records yeah. in my life. I, I recognize you. You're still the same old. As few, as one of them MD. As few as three. <laughs> yeah, one of them's mine. At least and, one. Uh, yeah. Um, the, yeah. I could tell. Yeah. I, I think. Uh, so I know what I'm talking about. That's right. Demoing is super important though because you you also get this like. Here's the thing. You get this feeling um, when you're working with the artist, any genre, when you're demoing, that. Especially if they're in control of the demo, like if they don't come to see you for the demo, like if they're doing it on their own setup and all that stuff, you get this real, real beautiful view on who they are. Yeah, right. Because right? a lot of the ego is dropped because if you're like, oh, I'm not going to do anything with this. That's this right. is just for our ears only. Yeah. Like people are not afraid to like show a little more. That's right. They're like, they're like, hey, is that like a whole other step then? Yeah, it's with the almost demo, like you just like. Maybe I misunderstand or... Well, for, for people that... It depends. Like, different levels of demoing. Like in like hip-hop, br- it seems like sometimes mixtapes are like demos. You get some gold and you're like, fuck it, we're going to release well, this that's shit. What I that's thought true. It sounds yeah, like that does happen, yeah. But it's supposed to be like a prototype. It's, yeah, like yeah, for it, band's ears only, just to like... To yeah, improve, yeah, just yeah, like yeah, when you're yeah, a sports player or something and you watch a video of yourself and yeah. you're like, holy fuck, I'm really dragging my leg. And then you stop dragging your leg. It's that's just right, like a learning yeah. step yeah, process that you do, but it's not really meant for people to hear. Like the real extensive demoing I've ever seen, probably the most extensive is with Newbie Newbinson of the Boomsday Alliance. Like these, the, we well, fucking these talent guys, like that. You got to sort that shit out. It, you know, you get things like where it's like song title version twelve, version fifteen, and you're yeah. like you're demoing it so many times, so many versions, so many demos, so many revisions, and then but that's it, iterations on what will be a final songs. Which is what demoing is. Yeah, doing. but see, I would lose passion if I did that many versions. Sooner or later, yeah. I'll get it right, and I'm not going to want to do anything more. So There's, like, it's funny. There is like a checkout period. Like if you could see whose names were associated with each revision, by the end, it's usually just down to one or two people like, yeah, this, this is the idea kind of thing. But like there's this kind of more of a group think with, with that process, particularly with that group. But with like demos, the way we're talking about it, it's, you know, the, the idea, like we're saying, like no ego with it. There is, you get this view of this person the way they want their music to sound. Yeah. So like, if you have any kind of connection to what they're they're already thinking, you have this beautiful window into what they expect, right? Like, like sometimes I don't know how you feel with this, but sometimes I get people coming to me with like reference tracks. I th- I find they're handy. I used to do it all the time for myself. I don't do it anymore. Though. No, right? Because like, like I'll have a kick drum. I'll be like, yo, the kick drum sound is fucking awesome. Like, right? Do you if like we this? can keep that in mind, then mm. that's fine. But I'm not like make it sound like this because it's Cause a that's guide, right? Yeah. Because yeah. it, I get really, I don't want to say scared is too hard of a word. More concerned. I get concerned sometimes when I when I have too many reference tracks because it's almost like we're uh, regurgitating ourselves in the industry because it's like say. Say everyone's using, like, say a kick, like a kick idea, yeah, and then that kick is already not a natural session kick, like if it's like a, it's a been, digital yeah, process, yeah, yeah, the process shit and whatever. It. And then I'm like, okay, I want this, and I want this, and I want this. At some point, someone has to diverge from that and say, like, look, no, I, I don't want that. I want something totally fresh, totally new, so we can be the reference for someone else. Yeah, you future. lose your originality yeah. with it if you try to match something else. It, yeah, because it's very diluted, and I, I, I get again, I don't want to say afraid, but like I'm, I'm concerned a lot, especially in hip hop, because it's like. Dude, I want blank kind of song. Okay, when you say that to me, you're saying, I want this producer and this artist's version for you because yeah. like that may or may not work. Like there, it's a very much of a process of like, I have enough money that I can make myself sound like this, and it's like no, there's like a it to it. You know? People like, shoot for the moon too. I when I used true, to do yeah. it, it'd be like, oh, I like. I remember I. Cambridge record or something I used some Against Me reference and it was when Against Me did it in a major label release and it was Butch Vig recorded their album and it's like <laughs> no matter how fucking good our session goes I'm not gonna sound anything like <laughs> as good as this does so it's like well I want I'm shooting for the moon it would be great if we had this it's like it's so unrealistic see that's funny you say it's that like, and then Cambridge is like widely regarded as like you know one of these the better albums of the past like 10 but not tone years. i mean not growing chorus uh this is not a victory i think that album sounds great no problems with that but this is our uh, growing chorus I fuck it. you weren't happy with the no the not the guitars, that? not the really guitars. sounds guitars sound like shit no, no. i think i think but that was right. just a learning curve for me the growing you know? chorus against is 
probably my favorite. Candy Sometimes shop. I listen to the singing on that. I'm like, holy! It's like a completely <laughs> fucking different person. Like, what am I yelling so much for? Which one stands up for you? Where you, you think to yourself, if I could do that again, I'd do it. Do it the same or do it different? Do it either. Either way. Like song or album? Yeah. This, which one? Which one would you do the same? I should say that. This is not a victory. I wouldn't change much on it. Much at all? Like no. It was fucking lightning in a bottle. And it's not really. I mean, it's not that fucking great. But it's like everything worked out. It was smooth. It's like I'm happy. With it. I listened to it. I'm like, oh, I can hear everything. Fucking everything sounds great. It's ridiculously fast. Like we didn't use a so, quick trick. So quick track. It's just like so fucking fast, and that's cool <laughs> because like. Nobody else is just like balls to the wall fast without a click anymore. And it's like, it's nice that that exists. I remember, here's the thing. You you and the other members of Cambridge are some of the nicest guys I've met in the scene. Any scene, period. Uh, some of the nicest guys. Eric. And uh, <laughs> Eric, rom-com. And, uh, and I remember one time, uh, it was like right before you guys went on with somebody. And uh, I don't recall the band, but you guys are the nicest guys. And they were kind of just, the band for you was not as quick as what we're talking about not, yeah. not really balls to the wall and i just remember just i just remember us all kind of commenting at the same time we're like oh and there's this one bridge section where they, they finally picked it up double time and we're like oh there you go there, there you go, you go. Uh, and then no. they dropped again back yeah. down to like a little one two one two kind of thing and i just uh I, I've always kind of held you guys as like this like crazy standard in my head, but it's funny. I hold it for myself. I'm just yeah. like, I listen to other records and I'm like, fucking James played faster than that. It's not necessarily even a good thing. Like some of them, I wish we pulled it back a bit because it's like so sure. rushed. Yeah, like so rushed. Does, yeah, like, <laughs> but like, it, I don't know. But then again, we come back to that point of like, hey, you captured something there where it's like you guys all really clicked really well. And exactly. It, and Growing Chorus was, I don't feel that way at all. I wish. I wish I'd known about the magic of DIs because we recorded all our guitars ourselves mm. and uh, we did it in a room out in Burkeville where Eric used to live mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of airplanes flying over. And it, you didn't DI any of that stuff? Well, I didn't know the I didn't know about remiking at the time. I didn't ah. know that remiking was a thing. Like I would have kept all the sounds that we got, but I would have just fired a DI in and remiked it in the studio just to get a little more clarity out of the guitars. So when I hear the guitars, I just hear that room. And I'm like, ah, eh, fuck it. Sucks. So in the band Cambridge at the time, for I, memory serves me correct, was was Paul playing with a growing chorus against at no. that point? No. So it was still, was still Terry. Terry. Yeah. Terry still had played. So you didn't even DI bass. It was no, we did bass in the studio. Bass and drums generally always go at the right. same time. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm going to try to do next week at, with the J. Lace. Always. Update. That's that's how I've always done it. I, I don't, yeah, it I, seems yeah. like the most efficient way to do it because if the rhythm section is on lockdown, especially Gander's like so fast at editing. Mm -hmm. So even if there is some bass edit that he has to make, it's done before you even like finish. Hey, can we edit that done? Just it's, marker on the top. Marker he's a top stylist though. guy too, which is so fucking awesome to watch him work. Really? I've never sat and watched a stylist guy before. Jesse Gander uses stylus. Oh, it's so fast. I would too now that I've seen it. It's like, as fast as you can scribble with a pen, you're doing stuff. I wonder if... Uh... Uh, if Noah had a like Cintiq, like Noah proper, Stacy, yeah, yeah, Noah Stacy. If he had, like, I bet you he would edit with it, like on the on his. It's on the very surface. intuitive. You just have to unlearn your whole lifetime of mouse. <laughs> sure, yeah, it's true. But which I mean, is but a hard lot, thing to do. But, but like, digital artists already have that. Yeah, exactly. Because, or like people that sort Anybody of. Yeah, that good with I guess he does already work with a stylus. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. why I think it would actually that's probably true. be good. Yeah, I love it. You just have to unlearn. Everything your about whole a, life your whole of running life. a computer, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but once you do, it's like yeah, how fast you got on iPads and shit when you can just touch the screen. Like, that's imagine true. if we had a mouse with our fucking phones, it would be a nightmare. Yeah, you but just, the like, stylus has also multiple inputs. You can do the right click, and you can do yeah, and so like it's double not tap just or a firm tap. It's not or a just a tap. finger, like a pr like so it's, it's like, like pressure velocity. sensitive. Yeah, it it's can, like pressure sensitive, like velocity. Yeah. I think the good ones are like if you're looking at a waveform in Pro Tools or something, and you want to like draw an automation in, you just press down a little. Firmly or something and do it and it'll put it. So it has a little like, has a little thing on the side that you can click to. Or maybe a little button. Also, yeah. yeah, like I said, I've never actually used one, but I watch him and I'm like, fuck, that is so fast. Yeah. I think I'm gonna have to reach out to him via you. And get maybe you guys when you get done recording, you guys can come back and talk. Love to. Yeah. No, he plays in several bands. I mean, he's a man about town. He had a rough summer. I think he got hit by a or he did for sure get hit by a taxi cab on what? a bicycle. Jesus. So we were actually supposed to start recording next week on the 14th, what? but we had to push it a week because he got fucking smashed by a cab driver on his bike. But well, you know, not to uh, not to shift gears like that, but uh, is that a pun? Tangents? Is that a shitty? Is that a bike shifting joke? No. Good. What good the hell call, is that? Seymour, you picked that up. <laughs> Drop my. I hate to downshift here, yeah, exactly. but uh, I don't want to derail the <laughs> yeah. conversation. I want to run into traffic. 
See, this proves my point that I didn't. I didn't I'm gonna say spoke the flames of this conversation. I let you spoke. Gross. Okay. All right. Gross. Easy dolsum with your reach. Uh, that was weird. Uh, I was What's that say, hockey guy's name again? Uh, fucking which one? Forrest, whatever we fucking joked about oh, earlier. Oh god. The hockey night in Canada. Foster guy. Hewitt. Foster <laughs> Hewitt. <laughs> yeah. Let's Foster Hewitt this Forrest. shit. Let's Foster, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I, I was gonna say though that uh, you know um, this past <sighs> weekend. I believe you had the opportunity to uh, play in a tribute show. Oh, yeah, Saturday night. Yeah, that was yeah. a real fucking fistful of emotions. But... I, I'd love just to hear your thoughts a little bit on, on, first of all, maybe we could just explain a little bit of why the show was happening and, and the reason behind it. The and... show was that my friend uh, Todd, who a couple years ago played in a band called The Rebel Spell, who uh, were a fairly famous Vancouver punk band, much like DBS, will be long be remembered as a notable Vancouver punk band. I mean, he dry, died fairly tragically last year, ridiculously tragically, mm. honestly. Um, what, what happened? Was uh, He was an avid rock climber, and he had a rock climbing accident and essentially fell off the side of the mountain. Ooh. Something he'd been doing his whole life. You know how somebody used to tell you that it's fucking good to die doing what you love? Well, it officially fucking sucks when people die doing what they love because they shouldn't have died. Oh. It's like you choking yourself to death on your fucking mic stand or something right now. Like it was a, something Jesus. that should not have happened. Jesus. It was awful. Um, That's awful, man. But anyway, he was very, uh, very well recognized. And there's um, Seamus, you know Seamus? Of course, yeah. Not, not your buddy Seamus? Uh, um, from Not Your Buddy. Yeah, Mc, uh, Mc13, I believe. Uh, well, that's not actually his name. I'm aware. Sometimes Facebook. I'm Sometimes people to, I, put different I know. names on sh- Facebook because for whatever reason, but that's not actually their name. Like, there's not really that many no end bridges out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> there's no end bridges. There's no end bridge, Martin. Yeah. I mean, that's not actually yeah. Are his Are you guys moment. cousins no end bridges? Yeah. Wow, there's a lot. Of, I've never yeah. heard that name before. I, uh, I've actually played a, previously when we used to play music on this show. Uh, I actually the glory used, days. I, I, yeah, I've played Not Your Buddy releases quite a bit, actually. Nice, yeah. yeah well, yeah, G-Tone Seamus. also does lots with him. That's well. right, yeah, yeah. But but anyway, Seamus put out a uh, between a label between Seamus and a label in Regina mm-hmm. and a label in Southern Ontario in Hamilton, kind of three way a uh, tribute LP, a double LP release. It's pretty awesome. Wow. Um, with a lot of bands doing various covers, propaganda has got a cover on there. Propaganda has a, um, a great cover on there. I, I actually I heard your cover, um, which was uh, "Sit with Me." Sit with me, anger. That was always yeah. my favorite Rebels Plus song long before Todd ever died. So it was one I went to fairly easily afterwards. You hit this like fever pitch in the last At the very end, yeah, yeah, and uh, uh, it gives me chills when I listen to it, man. It, Especially, it still fucks me up to play it. Do, yeah. Oh yeah. Now is this? This show that just took place, I mean, there's a, quite a large number of names on the show. You don't have to go through them or anything. It was 18 bands or 17 yeah, acts or something, not, but it was, like, smooth. It ran so smooth at Rickshaw. They had a second stage set up. That's, and that's how it... It was real smooth. I've, like, seen, I've seen some of them really done well. Like, I've seen at the... Uh, uh, oh, jeez, what's the one? Uh, fuck, man. Wise Hall, the Wise Hall up oh, yeah. in, uh, commercial. They do really well. Face That's why I'm heading after the show. I'm staying to Wise Hall. This oh, yeah? Time. Yeah, yeah f- uh, Face Fest always does a really good dual stage setup. Yeah, always. it's, it's, Fest. it's yeah. efficient. Face Fest. Fest. <laughs> yeah. Run by Are a couple friends of the show. faces? Yeah. Or? Yeah, I'm, yeah. Sh- I'm sure Sounds they're aggressive, involved. though. Yeah, they're involved. Is what I'm, yeah, but uh, this, this show... Um, 18 acts involved, obviously. 18 well, acts. Pretty well, short sets. Yeah. Like, how, like I only played two songs. I played Sit With Me Anger and another song that I wrote for Todd that'll be on my next record. But, what's so the, I only did what's two. the name of that one? That one's called You Were a Rifle. You Were a Rifle. Because propaganda. Oh, they had a song called I Am a Rifle. Is this previously unreleased? Yeah. It'll be on the new one for sure. Okay. There's like nothing out online about it or anything? On that song, there's a couple of YouTube versions there's of a, it. Yeah. yeah I, I was wondering. If that... Well, I played it lots. I played it lots when I first wrote it because I... Was just I was had a lot to it. Last year I toured a lot. This year I haven't as much because I've been saving up for recording. But last year, right after Todd died, I was like went on tour. I went on way a lot more tours last year, so I was it was at the tip of my tongue. So I was playing it a lot more. So there's quite a few live versions of it out there. But it's very it's very like uh, it's a very sobering idea to think about how your music can affect people and how when you're no longer in this existence how your music lives on and how people interpret that because I mean I'm sure that crosses a lot of people's minds I mean like how will you be remembered when right. you're gone like I'm not gonna have children and you know I, I always think about like what is it that I'm leaving 
do I have any kind yeah, of legacy, legacy at all? Yeah, legacy is right? something like, that's like a pretty important idea to me for some weird reason because I don't really give a shit about many material possessions. Mm-hmm. But I feel yeah, I like I like the fact that I have a large or hope to have an even bigger catalog of songs. Right, like a like a body work that people can celebrate. Yeah, and you look back at like not comparing myself to Johnny Cash or anybody, but like just fucking go on Google Play and look at Johnny Cash. He's got like five hundred fucking yeah. albums. Like yeah. he has such a legacy of songs, and like there's a million other people out there like that. But that's right. Flowed like, into the because uh, I think like a lot of databases are like SoundCloud's not a very like stable database of <laughs> like just as an example, right? Yeah. yeah. YouTube is not as equally vi- uh, you know. Yeah. Weird, who knows? But, YouTube might be dead knows, in ten years. But like. the Internet Archive for real. I think everyone should always, uh, if if you're gonna put it out freely or whatever, you should always upload the Internet Archive because it's like a long-standing thing, and it'll just be up there. Yeah, like just available it's a forever. Yeah, box. like the goal is that it's a thing, right? Yeah. That it's there for a long time. That's what makes sense. I mean, like just in just as an <clears> idea. <throat> yeah. Yeah. Well, no, that's for sure. I think I think when you talk about like someone like Johnny Cash, his body work is so large that he actually. Like if you if you I don't know who has this amount of time, but if you listen to it sequentially, you actually get to a point where, real like even commercially, he was not as successful as he was. But you're listening to the, the music, end until he rebirth. Right, himself, right, like. yeah, like literally right. So the, like he had this big flare up and then this kind of medium period and then just dropped off and then boom, flared up again with these American uh, yeah, recordings. The American series, yeah, right, yeah. yeah. So when when that came out. Obviously, everyone likes to have this revisionist history of like how it actually was perceived and all that. But if you listen to the stuff he was releasing in, like, say, late eighties, oh, he ate kind of, he ate shit in the eighties, yeah, man. right. Like, like we're talking about, um, you can you can feel the like I, the sports analogy is gripping the stick too tight. Oh yeah, yeah, he like was yeah, like he was he wants, well, and like wanted oh, it, but entirely owned by other people. Like your catalog oh, of music is owned by somebody else. You and have like, no, yeah, you have no. That's the thing, and that's really what I'm getting at is like legacy, self owning publishing, having having something to pass down, having having any kind of um, overall creative effect on the world around you is like like a powerful notion, and it's, it's a powerful like, notion, yeah. and it's like it's one that's like really easily capitalized by grief. Because grief sucks. Everybody wants to share grief. Like when somebody dies, yeah, it's like it feels yeah. good to share grief. Like I'm Just sad. Like I want to bring exist. you two motherfuckers with like me. Funerals wouldn't like, exist if there wasn't. This is yeah. too much for one person to deal with. So I want to share grief. And grief is easily shared through music. Like even if you, I've had people talk about rifle like not a similar situation, but the same word. Like the mm-hmm. the meaning hits them about somebody else they died in different circumstances <clears throat> or whatever. But like grief is something that really easily trans it's like a, an S T D within songs. Like it just transfers really well through music. Really well. Do, would you <clears throat> would you be comfortable sharing like maybe a story about Todd that comes to mind? Like a good a good something a well, there's good so many. I mean it's tough Todd's was a tough person because I knew him way before. Like we're both in the same small town, both from Williams Lake. So I knew him way before the Rebel Spell, and, like, so a lot of my memories are actually, like, of how much he didn't like me when we first met. Like, when I was just, like, <laughs> I met him when I was, like, 13, and I was just, like, some... He's a bit, he's a bit older than you, right? He's like, fucking significantly older than significantly. me. He was, like, 90 or something. He was really old. <laughs> <laughs> but we knew each other. Like, casual 70-year difference. I told this story at the show, so I'll tell it again. Like, okay. Um, he, uh... And remember when I was 13, I was just some fucking tie-dyed wearing Jim Morrison listened to fucking kid from Horsefly who had like, I didn't probably like my, I wouldn't like myself if I saw myself now. And it was like, <laughs> but we had mutual friends and like everybody gets older and angrier as like life wears you down. You get fucking angrier as you go on. Right. But Todd was the opposite. He was the angriest man I ever met when I met him when he was like 18. And as life went on, he just kept getting happier and happier and happier and happier so as he got happier and I started getting angrier, like right around 20, we, we ended up like finding similar levels <laughs> of like Even black-hearted out. hatred for the world. And like, it's like, okay, now we can be really good friends. And it just like ended up being a great friendship for the rest of it. But it took a long time because I had to like shed all the like ultra happy yeah. aspects of my life <laughs> and like embrace it. Cause he was so smart and he was so like eloquent and well-read about like, injustice in the world and he was a very right. fair and just person and like fucking drove a van that ran on french fry oil like he really walked the walk of all like you listen to his lyrics yeah. it's some pretty militant not militant but like strong vegan opinions strong cruelty free opinions like strong political opinions 
And they weren't just shitty Sid. It was like he lived that example to a T. And it's like... Even when it was not popular and like in mainstream. No, and not yeah. to be popular. He did it yeah. strictly for himself yeah. as, I think, an outlet for possibly his anger or something. Like he used his anger very positively. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's... It, it, it's a really strong example to follow. And I think that's why he affected so many people when he was gone. More pe- stronger than they thought. After he died, you don't you don't ever cash like I don't think what our friendship is worth because I can see you tomorrow or something. But right. like, as soon as that's gone, you never appreciate what you have until it's gone. You don't know how important a friendship is to you until it's gone, and you're so like, the void, "Fuck, this was yeah. so important to me." Yeah, that void really kind of sets in for a moment, and you're really having to consider it. Well, yeah, it's very. I gotta say that story you just told. It, it's very difficult for me to even think of something. You know, like I don't know. Like that's that's a beautiful. That's a beautiful way to remember that. That's, that, that's, oh yeah. that's I Thank like you. that idea. Uh, I mean, it's important to remember every aspect of, and people tend to like want to pretty everything up after sure. it's over. Like, after it's over, yeah. And just be like, everything was great. And it's like, well, everything isn't always great. There's a lot of shitty shit, but that's what builds a strong foundation or that's what mm-hmm. makes life interesting is, is conflict in, in a sense. like in a, in a very, very, very strong sense. And another strong sense Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to go check out a strong show, Jesse Laborde will be performing at Lanaloo's Sunday. Lanaloo's. Only fucking viable all-ages venue in town. So That's bring your right. kids. And they're good people there. What can they I say? They are really good people there. Some people ask me why I play Lanaloo's. And I'm like, well, A, Seamus is the fucking one of the hardest working pr- promoters in town. Mm-hmm. He's always been fair to everybody. Like, nobody says a disparaging word about Seamus because he works really fucking hard. Should we say disparaging words now? Let's start the Fuck trend. That guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's just make some shit up. Nah, I like Seamus. No, he yeah. can. I mean, he's, got, he's a dog lover. He fucking treats everybody with respect. He's and a good like, guy. Um, uh, and the other reason is this is all ages. Like, I do. I got a couple kids that like to come out to shows and, like, I got a few friends who have like little infants that like that, to expose yeah. their kids to music too. And there's that's nowhere in town that you can do that. So other than Len Luz. So that's I, why I like to play Len Luz. I think it's a great spot. And also, ladies and gentlemen, on the bill, Jesse Laborde headlining. We also have Mobina Galore from Winnipeg. Who are fucking awesome. Oh, have you yeah. actually ever heard Mobina Galore? Uh, no, but I, I was actually... They're a uh, two-piece fucking banger band that is just like a so A two-piece. Awesome. Yeah. Ooh, I nice. like that. We also got Misha and the Spanx from Which Calgary. Another two-piece. That's wow. right. And uh, we got... Uh, and our friend... Oh, friend of the show. Long time friend of everybody. Russian Tim. Speaking Russian of t- people DJ who, Russian Tim. Who, DJ, DJ Russian, Russian Tim, Tim this day. <laughs> 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 we were saying last week he's our favorite DJ. He's like the same thing. Like Some people counter like whatever negativity with positivity some people counter it with like more negativity and kind of like (laughs) dive into that there's people like tim who are just like fuck everything's awesome and just like you can't even be shitty around him because he's generally so happy most of the time that's right about his band stoked about music stoked about punk rock it's like it's nice to be surrounded by people who like (laughs) are fucking i think it'd be nice to travel to russia with tim because he'd probably show you a really good... Like, it wouldn't be the classic Russian experience, but I bet you'd have a really good time. Yeah, I bet he'd show you a really good time. Yeah, we I'm played confident. with the Last time I was at Lon Lewis, we played with a band called Mansbridge, who's their drummer. It's Russian That's right, as well. yeah. Oh, okay. And that was like... Great we're, name, we're by the way. making jokes about... Uh, yeah, it's a great name. <laughs> yeah. uh, making jokes about a Russian drummer, and I'm like, he is really good. He's like, of course, because he's Russian. And I'm like, that is such a... That's it, yeah. Say, and like. he's, he's so quick. Like, he never misses a beat ever. Like, we had him here talking about uh, soccer hooligans, because they oh, just... Oh, he loves his football. They just had... Uh, some kind of uh, footy match between like Russia and England. It was, yeah, like, there some was some weird, shittiness between but it, the teams. Yeah, it was like, really like hijacked by like fascists and, and things oh, yeah. like that. Football crowds are weird, man. So we had him talking about it. And even like a really kind of dark topic like that, he was still like just yeah. snapping yeah, along. We're like, oh, you man, can't beat that guy. It's unfortunate. Yeah, it's unfortunate. But, uh, <laughs> you know, some people, they, they don't know how to act. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's great. He's so great. Love it, man. Uh, that's awesome. You know what I was going to say? And uh, that show is also my 300th show. That's the 300th, 300th show. Second, actually. Come on down to Lanaloo's October 16th. Have you ever counted your performances? I mean, obviously, you count this. It's difficult without music, I guess. I'd but. say I'm... So, no. I, I couldn't give you a <laughs> I couldn't give you a number. I mean, these these shows, we've done 107 of these, but I mean, I've done... That's pretty good. That's one a week. That's that's It's a good way to keep that number tally going up is just to yeah, keep it consistent. it's pretty... Uh, I mean, I usually take about two weeks off for Christmas because... Yeah, just fucking... Holiday. Ain't nobody I mean, listening to video podcasts over the holiday right. season. Right. Also, anyway. t- top... 
try to try to draw anyone down here to do it for like i'm like yeah, i know it's your like, holidays you want to come on december 23rd yeah. and do it <laughs> the rainiest portion yeah, of vancouver like, yeah. yeah cool i ain't doing anything yeah. else that's funny that's when everyone always pitches it hey I'm, i got some time no like, no, no well, i don't I just want to yeah. do a summer banger at the same time summer banger yeah summer i've got banger. some time over yeah. yeah man we gotta get in the studio this week summer's coming <laughs> Some like, rum and eggnog going. Uh, like, we could have a really cozy uh, Christmas podcast here, actually. I'm probably going to Christmas. You could. You up. could honestly Christmas is joined up and have yeah. a really great. You get like a little, just like get a few shitty candles. on rum nogs. <laughs> yeah, great. exactly. Get it really dark, too, <laughs> might so it's do, like really hard to see. Might do a little Halloween episode, I think, in a couple weeks. Hal Epps? A little Hal Epps. Hal Epps. Be, I'm yeah. going to be hollow away. Hollow Epps? I'm actually like, going to be away. Oh, hollow Epps. Just FYI. We, we, oh, you'll be away? I'll be away on Halloween weekend. We'll sort that out after the show. What's the, when was the last... What was the last thing you guys, both of you, what was the last thing you were both uh, dressed up for Halloween? I tend to not give a shit about Halloween. And I'm uh, actively, I mean, I'm shocked. Like actively tried. Yeah, I'm like shocked it. that I'm, I'm give a shit about something. I'm shocked that you don't give a shit. <laughs> um, no, but I, I generally, I for luckily, have been on tour for a lot of the years. And That's then good. last year we were at Fest, but the year before... Fuck! Did I go up as it went as something? But it was pathetic. It was just like pathetic. this excuse to wear this or something. <laughs> it was like I'm a punk rocker. Yeah, exactly. I'm a guy dressed in black. Uh, uh, I can't even honestly remember what my fucking lame ass excuse for a present was. It was lame though, and that was fine with me because okay. I don't care. What were you, C Mark? Uh, I did Shaggy the cup three years ago, but then I did some. I you know I don't. Were you Shaggy the rapper oh, or Shaggy the Scooby Doo? Uh, Scooby Doo, <laughs> the hip hop artist or Scooby Doo? I did not blackface it. Yeah, I, well, the uh, mercy. It's just Shaggy face. Yeah, I grew a shitty goatee. Shaggy boom. I don't grow beards very well. So. Yeah, we had a nice plan to do a Bob's Burgers family once because we had a bunch of friends who we could all oh, kind yeah. of tap into the line. And I could grow myself a nice mustache pretty easy, so mm. I was like, Shoddy Bob. Just All I have it. to do is Big like time, not man. shave for two weeks and put an apron on and like grow a nice. mustache. That's pretty decent. I love H. John Benjamin. Yeah, me He's too. I'm a huge Archer fan. Huge, he kills John, me all the huge time. Huge Archer fan. Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, last time I last thing I dressed up as was a uh, fucking like a Dalmatian, and it was so shitty. It was way more. That's the thing. The you purge. have to take it so like fucking <laughs> seriously that at that point, it's like, why go out? Like you're just going to a party. Like, I find I was super Cruella, awkward for them. Liz was Corilla Deville. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and you were a Dalmatian. She was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's kind of apt. She yeah. was like, what are you going to be? And I, and I said, uh, uh, I was like, well, I'll just be a Dalmatian. And she was like, no, really? Really? That, that'd be perfect. And I was like, yeah, sure. She's like, you don't want to be like Predator or something? Like, uh, like, like no, I don't want to wear a Predator, predator be costume or a party. But, like, but Liz makes right your though. costumes, doesn't she? No, well, she made that one. Yeah, she yeah. Well, that's the thing. My partner exactly. goes crazy for it too. She loves to dress up, loves costumes, yeah. loves Halloween. We're exact opposites when it comes to like enthusiasm <laughs> towards dressing up. I'm just like, can we bail on this party so we don't have to do anything? Yeah. And she's yeah. like, no, fuck no. I'm gonna be a fucking huge 18th century like something else or like something crazy. Victorian Duchess. Yeah, it's like I've already got my headdress ordered and like. Hilarious. But uh, yeah, I don't care about Halloween. Kids, kids I like the I like house like parties. parties yeah. I like house parties because I feel like they're the best of the party, right? Like, yeah. and they're the, one of the few times a year that you can still like at any age find a house party, or at least probably find a house yeah. party. But the the pressure is we annoying. always do a little shake a lake every year, and uh, probably give you a ring. Uh, if, doing? If I don't you, know what my wanna, plans are. I don't I know if I have be, any plans uh, this year. Might be I got a wedding. Might, you'll be, you'll I'm be not a joking. Wedding. You live in the up and coming area oh, of okay. New West. You can find yourself hey, at Mickey D's uh, <laughs> Halloween party. This guy. Hey, Throwing Mickey D too. I like that throwback. Throwing addresses. Well, and, that's what he's in my phone. What do we call him now? Didn't you call him Mickey D earlier? No, it is MD. Oh, MD. But I like Mickey D. Well, isn't that what it means? Yeah, it is. That is what it means. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, I just called you Mickey. On, on, I like it. I That's like okay. it. It actually. I like uh, the old school moves. It gives you a, a credibility. I knew him before That's he right. was MD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like actually, way back. He introduced himself as Mickey D. So it's yeah. Not That's like how it was I, a I met MD as or something Mickey D. Like, no. Yeah, I met a. I, I, it was like I was MD before I was MD, but I was Mickey D, and then I was MD. It just kind of like naturally evolved into its thing. I, I remember yeah, the first day I met funny. MD. What was happened? that the fall? We were at the, the art gallery there, or the the tattoo shop. That was and when it opened, the grand open. No, no, it was uh, the first relic oh, art the show. Fall. I was like, I thought you meant the fall season. Oh, oh yeah. no, no, the no, relic no. video game company art show. Yeah, they had the art show there, and MD arrives in like hip hop outfit, 
extraordinaire. Like he's got a towel with him too. He's got, you know what I mean? Like he's still rocking the towel. What? He's hanging what? out. He just what? shows what? up. What? And uh, I remember very distinctly, he seemed so much taller. Like a Darth Vader. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Holy like, oh, I shit, remember this guy's used... intimidating. But even then, like, now I'm like, he's not even that tall. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but at the time, I was like, oh, this is MD. That was like, ego and stature. Yeah, you just, like, <laughs> yeah. somehow were yeah. tall. I think uh, I've deflated over the years. <laughs> <laughs> the years say the Full years wear time. down on people. Yeah. No, it was great, though. Well, MD was awesome. Yeah, I, I vaguely remember that. You bailed eventually. Like, I you had did. To go. You I had think to go. I Irish exited. I was like, I'll be right back. And I just left. I'm always surprised that there's never another way to leave. <laughs> I, I'm such a huge fan of the Irish exit. I use it consistently. I mean, if I see somebody, I'll say goodbye. But when we're ready yeah. to go, it's like, fuck, we'll see all these assholes yeah, exactly. later. Like, yeah. I'm like, I don't, I don't owe them anything. Yeah, I don't yeah. owe you a goodbye. We actually have this great song we wrote for season four. I know you're a big fan of the Boomsday Alliance. The Boomsday Alliance. We've been writing songs for season four I all saw year. That. And some cool artwork. I saw a nice KTR. Yeah. We're, we're actually, we have Noah doing a piece of artwork for every song being released. Nice. So Is KTR coming over at all to, to participate? He's been doing, uh, he's going to Yeah, he's got light tracks. Yeah. yeah. He, no, yeah. he comes here because he gets decent flights, right? Oh, yeah, we yeah. got good ranks. Right. You got a guy on the inside. Yeah. He, by the way, Zenny received the royal couple. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Oh, really? Yeah. And I saw in the picture he was in the background. I didn't he said there that. was a bunch of, like, like no selfies, no, yeah. like, a bunch of rules. He was and still I, in a photo, though. I right. saw it. <laughs> Just throwing up the dubs. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's side? Classic yeah. Joel. Yeah. Classic Not Zenny. Really. Yeah, no. It was, uh, it was pretty, you know, weird, weird, though. Like, I, I personally don't give a fuck about the royalty i'm working with I, these I give a fuck be- i don't give a fuck obviously because it's dumb but i find it so crazy that so many people do yeah like i'm doing consultation for this uh producer in the uk right now he's a great guy and uh drop his name no uh i'll just, I'll just i don't know how he'll take this so I, i'll just say like I've been <laughs> so so uh i've been working with it, like you know doing some consultation with this guy and working with him and uh He's a great, great guy. But uh, he was like, hey, just a heads up. You know, the royal visits uh, this week uh, weekend. Make sure you take care of them for us or something like oh, that. Great. Some real- oh, I'll fucking take care great. of them, all right? And yeah. I, I had to be like... What the fuck had, am I going to do? <laughs> I had to send the message. I, I had to say, like, I'm like, uh, just heads up. I'm like, that's almost a whole generation removed of caring. Like, yeah. like I'm like, my parents probably noted it, but... My grandparents cared about the yeah, monarchy, like, not like, even my parents. Like, I'm United two States generations also cares away from a lot somebody. more than us, too. You think? The U.S. I cares... I think we have way more monarchists than here. Like, go no. to Victoria. Victoria takes it fucking seriously. I mean, yeah, named, that's Because they're named though. after the yeah, queen, the queen mom. Like, they take it... When I lived in Victoria, and I remember... Even Canada Day. Like, they go crazy for that shit over there, and I don't always that's know true. why. I, just always thought this... I also hate everything, so I don't know if I'm a <laughs> judge of yeah, like, what fair. is appropriate it's like something's happening well odds are i fucking hate it yeah it, i actually that's how I, I talked about you last week on the show i said uh, it's like i want to be known for being super positive but also hating everything yeah, I, I laid it out like i was like you know jesse laborde is like one of uh my favorite songwriters uh, he's such a good guy People don't have anything bad to say about him. I'm like, it's very difficult to actually <laughs> but find. He's got lots uh, of bad to say about him. <laughs> <laughs> it's not returning the favor. It's like the nicest thing anybody's it's, ever said. Yeah, I was like, I was like, you know, it's very difficult to find anything to criticize about the guy. Uh, it just oh, seems though nice. that everything I love, he hates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that was yeah. the best way I could intro you. And, I'm sure yeah. we like similar things. We both like uh, it's Sean Benjamin. We do like it's Sean Benjamin. We could hang out and uh, try. Do you out ever some watch honey? fucking honey? Home, home movies? Honey? Actually, Coach, home movies Coach is how M- I... Coach McGurk. You don't want to do that, Brendan. <laughs> <laughs> Coach McGurk, I remember very fondly around 2002, sitting on a couch, and uh, I was at my friend's house, and he consistently would sh- show me um, this this cartoon called Home Movies, and uh, he would always, always, always point out the coach all the time, and he'd be <laughs> like, he's really funny. funny he's part so of the funny. Show. He's just like his deadpan delivery. He's like, you don't want to do that, Brendan. Don't be like me, Brendan. You want to wake up in a <laughs> like <laughs> in a car after wondering what you've been drinking all night. Like, and I, and I, I just remember, like, I was like, oh, that's kind of crazy. And the funny thing about that is, like, uh, Brendan Small, uh, who's the creator of home movies yeah. and, did, and did the voice of Brendan and all that, went on to make Metalocalypse, which is one of my no. No word of exaggeration ever. Just one of my favorite metal it bands. It's pretty funny, yeah. A oh, fucking favorite metal band. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> this fictional cartoon band. Yeah. Yes! Hold on. Like, Sorry, I probably Death, spiked up there. Nah, it's like, it's like Death Clock as a band. Death Clock. 
<laughs> one of my favorite fucking fans. Let me just tell you this. If there Let are, me tell you something a little about Death If Watch. there are people out there that still jam Spinal Tap, and they like they play the songs seriously, and they're like, I just love it. They turn it up to 11, that kind of shit. Then I can Still fucking listen. that's the funniest yeah. joke in the world, an amp that goes to 11. Yeah, and then, then I can... <laughs> so funny. So, so fucking it's, it's funny. It's never funny. been not funny. Yeah. It's top notch. It's always topical. Uh, then I certainly can listen to Death Clock's song, Bloodrecuted, <laughs> at the gym, <laughs> and have people be like, what's this song about? I'm like... It's about this guy. Uh, blood execution. <laughs> yeah. So, about well, your blood serving as a conductor for blood. Blood executed. <laughs> and, that, and that's serious. I think I've walked around with a copy of that album on my phone for the last few years, at least. Yeah, for sure. But uh, they're, they're good, man. I fucking love those guys. We could, Well, we could definitely hang out and we can make some honey and butter sandwiches. You ever have those? Mm-mm. No, but I've had peanut butter and honey. Just Quite slow right down now. with your rich, slow highbrow down. peanut butter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Honey's great if you want to make uh, pita chips too. If you just go get pita and you just like get a little salt, like honey, you just like w- pita chips drizzle over top of your pita chips. Yeah, like you kind of oh. get a brush, so then it's kind of, and then in the oven it'll kind of crisp up really Fuck, nice. Fuck, look at that! That sounds nice. like delicious. Uh, yeah, it's really good. I think actually, you're gonna have a new segment. You might have to come up with a killer Seamart recipe every week. <laughs> yeah, feel free to steal. Quick, quick moment break for Seamart's recipes. Yeah, feel free to steal all you want though. It's cool. We'll yeah, there's lots more honey, or there will be till it runs out. Mm-mm. Ladies and gentlemen, Mm-mm. if you want to follow Jesse Laborde, how can they do so, sir? Everywhere, and I've fucking just searched my name, which is impossible to remember. Yeah, so I don't even actually know how to spell it. Oh, good luck with that. Try to spell it. <laughs> Try to spell my last name. Uh, I, actually, I tried to uh, send you on Labor Day this year your I think I can that do it. meme that oh, went. Meme, yeah. I think I can meme. do it. Give it a shot. L E B O U R D A I S. Correct. That's right. But the B should be capitalized. Oh, capital B, yes. Right. Right. Other than that, pretty much bang on. But and yeah, I'm all Jesse about Borde, it. Uh, I've started a coffee roasting business. That's the other thing. Oh, that I was oh yeah. About. We talk about that. But that's not, a, that's, I mean, I, it's tough because I'm not trying to make falter about me at all. Like, I'm just trying to legit. Falter farms, farms, right? Yeah. yeah. Falter um, farms. How could people follow that? On the internet as well. I'm all over the fucking internet. You don't have to look too hard to you're find well me. You're well done. You're you're a captain of industry, sir. Well, I don't get people who do things and then take a snobby stance to the internet. I feel that the internet is unfortunately something you have to embrace. Now this, yeah, I am shocked. That, you know that about people like <laughs> people who don't try to do. It's like, well, you can't find me on the internet. It's, at this point, it's like, why? Like, just get on the fucking internet. Yeah, I mean, people that actively avoid it. Yes. It's like, come on, just get on. Hire, hire somebody else to do it. Like, it's the first place anybody is gonna look to well, find as a anything business, about it's you. Like, ridiculous to. To not do it, right? Yeah. Or you're like some underground like country club or something like that. In which case, well, like you're trying you're to not keep it off on, the radar. Yeah, or that's like the, but... that's the move. Okay, like pre-internet though. Can you imagine? Just imagine the scenario. Imagine you're the kind of artist nowadays that would be like, I'm not on the internet. I don't do social media. If you want to meet me, meet me in person. Click and they hang up the phone or whatever. If first if, of all, I never would have answered the phone. First yeah. of all, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if you go phone. back to if you go back to pre-internet, okay, that Ooh. mentality would be fucking. Insane. Like, think about how well, insane Well, my first tour, I had to book by phone. I, know it's not, I mean, that's not in the, like, so that fish. distant past. Well, like, the internet was a thing, but, like, nobody would check emails. This is, like, pre-MySpace almost. Like, first of all, I prefer phone for that business. We know that. Actually talking we all on the that, fucking yeah. telephone? I prefer. Like, ringing and picking it up and saying hello? Just because there's Did a lot met of... MD? He calls people like an asshole. Oh, there's a There's a lot of nuances in business that you want to accomplish with a proper tone, Seymour. So why do I get a phone call then? I, I, just like I would agree that at, there's a point when you're trying to get shit done where a phone call will expedite the process. Sure, yeah. But for the most part, right. I would just as soon text you and say, yo, let's meet up. Okay. I'm all about connectivity. I'm not afraid to fucking hash details out, but I just find the actual telephone conversation, hot thing on your ear, an inefficient way to do that. Plus, it's you know a what? little presumptuous. I got to tell you, the thing that got me away from the hot thing on the ear, because I hate that. I hate the phone feeling hot and then smudged and you got to wipe your screen. I hate that. The thing that got me off that... <laughs> speakerphone. My last couple phones, the... Uh, included headphones have the speaker attached to it, whatever. It's That's so flawless. annoying. That's yeah, so nobody, annoying. nobody wants to make fun of you at all when you're walking down the street no. talking on your phone. Like I'll that. tell you what. The nope. guy that's like, them. face out. At least like, I'm not uh, sweaty face making a fucking call. And how dare you? How, how dare, dare you? you? Well, I'll tell you how I dare. Because every time I follow somebody who's talking on a fucking headset, you're like... <laughs> What are you doing? Or a mother pushing a baby who's talking on a headset? Like, you're confusing the shit out of your child. She, like, the child. <laughs> I'm sure she's got real important things she's talking about. She's like, oh, did you know the price of hockey's went up? I'm like, I don't give a shit. Price of hockey's Jesus. always going up. 
I think I said Huggies. You probably did, but hockey. I said hockey because of all price the sports hockey. enthusiasts both, out there. Both are not that guy though. He's the price of hockey is going. Yeah, that guy is not a sports enthusiast. That guy outside just walked by his top tier for sure. I got a shopping cart and a bag of popcorn. Fuck off, Justin Laborde, friend of the show. Wrapping this up here, I just talk. That's okay. The thing that, that's the beauty about we having never on actually the show. had any meat on this show at all. It's There's just all filler. Pretty much. No, I, I think we touched on some good stuff. And uh, you're a smart guy. I think it shouldn't Thank be very nice fifty fucking episodes in a row before you. Or come it back. should. Do you want to come back in the near future? I'd love that. Yeah. Well, maybe when the record's done, maybe we can get Commander Gander in here too. You get Mr. Gander in here, and we can talk about stylus editing, and uh, I'll be all about it. Yeah. It's it's the future. He'll come in with it and show me how to. <laughs> and I'm I'm seriously thinking about going for a float now. I really too. think you should because have you, uh, honestly, neither of you have actually floated. No, MD has a bunch. You, you have floated. I have g- pretty good experience floating. Oh, cool! Yeah. And you enjoy it? All all, Love all it. things sincerely. Couldn't couldn't possibly recommend it more. Cool. I mean that. I know I know they sponsor the no, show. No, I believe you. I mean, I'm, but, uh, it's like I can certainly see the benefits in it. Like honestly, you know, sponsoring the show is like one thing, right? But like the the idea that like it's something I actually fucking like is so super huge bonus sure they make you do the commercial but it's like <laughs> yeah. it's not breaking your every time he says it. the word float it's it's, it's like it's good real for us. it's real it's a real thing but no it's awesome man i i personally have uh like like again i, I try i kind of said it at the beginning of the show but like i've had such personal revelations in there oh really that it, it like you can dramatically reshape the way you think. How, how fucking blazed were you out of 10 when you went in there? Uh, my first few, I just I go sober as fuck. Nice. Yeah. I think the move is to go sober yeah, for you the want first to, couple. Yeah, you want a baseline. To get a baseline, and then you can start to mess around with huh. your uh, headspace. Yeah, because like... If you're into that. I'll tell you like, If you do that, which yeah. we don't, it's its own, I've never done that. It's its own kind of drug, really. Like, So if you're like candy flipping... Is full sensory deprivation? Like you don't hear shit all either? Full. Like, nice. like, and you just turn it how much and stuff. So. Like silicone, like they, first of all, they give you a tray of your type of ear plugs that you want, like silicone, latex, blah, blah, any kind you want. And once, once you're all ready to go, you have this pre-shower, you get everything off you. It's very beautiful. Like this aroma so it awakens all your senses. It does smell delightful in here already. You, you climb into the tank and uh, you know, this is after a brief orientation. Everyone shows you how to like still yourself in the tank. And once that's all done, man, oh man, you, you have How claustrophobic is it? At all? Zero. Zero. But that's if, why you want to go not fucked up. Yeah. Like because if, there is that possibility that some people yeah. get a little like tight in there and yeah. any kind of drugs will or whatever will kind of like yeah, could and, know, could yeah. heighten that. I just read this past week, Floathouse had uh, reposted an article about this uh, professor who just who just used isolation tank to cure, like treat um, uh claustrophobia so hmm. it, so it's actually like a super benefit and, and then just to give you an idea too like the tank when it people think that when you close the door like there's it, it's like too much or something like that locks it, alien yeah, style. Exactly. Like chunk chunk yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. it's like a f- hand braces strap mm-hmm. you yeah. down it, it's like that's a, what i'm picturing in my head no right it's now. like it's like a fridge like a fridge door like a domestic fridge like it's super easy super to open. easy to open and up. then more, more to the point though is uh like in the orientation, they even show you in the video you watch, it says like, hey, if you don't feel comfortable with the door all the way closed or whatever, it's like we provide you, like there's so many towels and, and house coats and, and slippers they give you a lot. You can take wedge one of the towels. It yeah, wedge it. it. Like they show you how to do it in the video. So it's it's so implied and understood. Well, it's, they, yeah, yeah, they take care really of it. They really awesome. want you to be comfortable. Yeah, they don't want people freaking out. Yeah, there. man. And yeah. Like, yeah, that's the thing. Like they, <laughs> they have zero to gain if if you have yeah. a bad experience, right? Like, yeah. And this is the like, and tell you, this is like the premier experience. Like, there's there's a lot it's of the premier uh, float house in Vancouver. Let's not kid oh, ourselves. Like, I can't think of a better float. House. I don't know. Like, like you just used the washroom here, and you were like, "Well, full it was, full service washroom." <laughs> yeah, that's right. Fantastic. So uh, I, I'll tell you, I'll leave it on that point. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, Justin Labordi is amazing. He's got a Thank new album so coming out. Thank you so much for having me. Well, gonna, he's going to go in the studio. He's going to go in the studio first and make it. But uh, It's written and re- That's it's right. Ready. Summer bangers it's coming. Red. Summer bangers. Got some hot summer bangers. Go check <laughs> out time. Justin Labordi's 300th show at Lana Luz, October 16th. We'll play a lot of new songs. That's right. Uh, tickets are $10. So, yeah, $10. It won't sell They're up. great. It, <laughs> this guy wants... <laughs> Not with that attitude. <laughs> Not well, with that attitude. It's true, but I don't want it to sell out. I want people to get in. wait until this promo goes out. It's true. This promo is going to fucking huge bump. Boom. Huge big spike. Bump. Big spike. 
Boom. Mention the show at the door and get... No, okay. <laughs> get into the show. 20% for the show. 20% yeah. per ticket get increase. into the show for the ticket of price. Yeah. Mention yeah. this show at the door and get a blank dollars. stare at the door. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Never yeah. heard of him. Yeah, never. Who's that? Who's that? Yeah, is that AM or FM radio? <laughs> yeah. Fuck, that's what listen. station? Yeah. I don't believe you. <laughs> uh, Seymour, how can people follow you online if they want to follow you? Yeah. It's just not a thing. They don't. Good. And uh, An Irish follow the, over the Boomsday radio. Alliance yeah. on Instagram, though. You can follow Boomsday Alliance on Instagram. It's pretty good Instagram. It's actually spreading like wildfire, so that's yeah, pretty good. good. Uh, if you want to follow me, you could do so at MD underscore Boomsday. That is on uh, all across the board, Facebook, that's Instagram, the same for me. Twitter, at Snapchat. 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 Uniform, Snapchat. right? Yeah, Jesse. Yeah, you got to keep it. If people figure it out, they want to check it out. What is it on, uh, on, on the actual handle? What is it? At Jesse Laborde. At Jesse Laborde. One word. Just, One word, Just yeah. under those Snapchat, character Instagram. minimums. Instagram. Twitter, Beauty. Tumblr, although I don't use my Tumblr at all. And if you want to use uh, your resources and time wisely, we'd love it if you subscribe to our podcast on iTunes or you can subscribe to us on Stitcher. We're also on YouTube. What? Say hello. The and internet. That's right. We're all over the internet and uh, we're on SoundCloud. Coming to you. Might not be on SoundCloud very much longer. But Why just... is SoundCloud sucking? I, I don't want to say they suck. I don't, use I don't know why you're so down on uploading. I just feel like... Some of the avenues we've opened up in the last few months are superior, just both in reach. I, I feel it is an inferior. Yeah, inferior, uh, yeah. but it, it, right now it's tied up because it's also our RSS feed. So it's feeding. I think Son SoundCloud's good to just have it on there. It's, it's, it's true. Always, it's no I, harm I'll, to put I'll tell it you up what, there. The waveform still is a, dyna- a great way to look yeah, at it. Yeah, I'll tell you, it'll always be up there. I'm just saying that, like, might not be pushing it as hard as I yeah yeah that sure yeah funny. but uh, yeah we love you guys so much thanks for uh, coming and doing the show with Laborde thanks we for having me I'm, I hope it was exciting in any way I just talk about it it's dumb you're, you're time, one of so. our fucking fans um, this dumb one time we should do it and just get super drunk we could definitely do that I think we had moonshine one time moonshine right? we had last time yeah that's right yeah. that's insane we do that up uh, that sounds like a 20 minute episode 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. just go hard you don't know me <laughs> yeah well <laughs> That was All right. the last time Just I like, was at Florida. And mic off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, we, uh, we love you guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, Bye. Subscribe. See you all next week. Bye.